Convolution Neural Network are the standard neural network used for prediction when the input observations are images, which is the case for many neural network applications. They are used to solve difficult image-driven pattern recognition tasks and with their precise yet simple architecture offer a simplified method of getting started with artificial neural network. This allows us to encode image-specific features into the architecture, making the network more suited for image-focused tasks, while reducing the number of parameters required to build the model. On today's video, we will start first by discussing how does our brain recognize people and objects around us or in images. Then we will discuss why do we need convolution neural network. And then we will end this video by discussing how does the convolution neural network operate. So, without any further delay, let us get started. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Object recognition is the ability to separate images that contain specific features from the images that do not. Understanding how our brain recognizes objects is at the center challenge of understanding the human vision and building artificial vision system. It is a large part of understanding the convolution neural network. Our brain is a blind supercomputer. It understands, but it doesn't see. In order to figure out what it needs, our eyes will tell us what are the objects around us looks like. The issue is that the eye only knows a handful of words, and sometimes our brain gets confused with what our eyes is trying to tell us. Optical illusion is when our brain and eyes communicate in a simple language, but the interpretation gets mixed up. In order to understand, let us start by a brief game of optical illusion. Look at the following pictures and guess what you see. This image illustrates how the brain works. It processes certain features and classifies them. The brain struggles to adjust depending on which angle we see and look at the image. This proves that our brain looks at features when seeing objects. Depending on the feature it sees, it categorizes part of the image in a specific way. So when you look on the right side of the image, you see certain features because they are closer to your center of focus, and therefore the brain classifies it into one category. And then when you look to the left side of the image, you see a different set of features, and so the brain classifies it into another category. You have probably been through hundreds of situations in your life where you have looked at objects suddenly and made it out to be something. Then after looking at it more carefully, you realize it is entirely different. So what happened here is that your brain detects the object for the first time. But because the look was brief, your brain did not process enough of the object features to categorize it correctly. The point to be made here is that your brain categorizes objects in an image based on the features it detects first. The previous images were designed so that what you see in them depends on the line and the angle from which your brain decides to begin its feature detection expedition. As we proceed in our section in convolution neural network, you will understand the astonishing similarity between how these networks operate and how your brain does. They also categorize objects or images based on the set of features passed through them and that they managed to detect. So why do we need convolution neural network? Computer vision is one of the areas that has been advancing rapidly thanks to deep learning. Deep learning computer vision is now helping self-driving cars to detect where are the other cars and workers in order to avoid them. In addition to that, deep learning is now making face recognition works better than ever before. We can unlock phone, unlock door just using face recognition. 
and I'm sure in your mobile you will find so many apps that will show you pictures of food or hotels and the companies that made these apps has been using deep learning in order to show you the most attractive, beautiful and relevant pictures. Here are some examples of computer vision problems. You have already seen image classification, sometimes also called image recognition, where you might take as input a 64 by 64 image and try to figure out if this is a cat. Another example of a computer vision problem is object detection. So if you are building a self-driving car, maybe you don't just need to figure out that there are other cars in the image, but instead you need to figure out the position of other cars in the picture so that your car can avoid them and also draw boxes around them. And also there can be multiple cars in the same picture, or at least every one of them within a certain distance of your car. One of the challenges of computer vision problems is that the inputs can get really big. For example, if we are working with a 64 by 64 images and we have multiplied by 3 because there are 3 color channels, then we will get 12,288. So, X input feature has a dimension of 12,288. And that is not too bad. But 64 by 64 image is actually a tiny image. If you work with a larger images, maybe this time it is a 1000 pixel by 1000 pixel image and that's actually just 1 megapixel. But the dimension of the input feature will be 1000 by 1000 by 3 because you have 3 RGB channels and that is 3 million. So if you have 3 million input features, then this means that X here, the input feature will be 3 million dimensional. And so, if in the first hidden layer you have just 1000 hidden units, this matrix will be 1000 by 3 dimensional matrices. This means that this matrix will have 3 billion parameters, which are very very large. And getting enough data to prevent a neural network with 3 billion parameters from overfitting will be very challenging. Not only this, the computational and memory requirement to train a neural network with 3 billion parameters is just a bit unfeasible. And you don't want to stack using just tiny images for building computer vision application. We want to use large images. To do that, we need to implement the convolutional operation, which is one of the foundational building blocks of convolutional neural network. And that's why we need to implement the convolutional neural network. The convolution neural network mainly focuses on the basis that the input will be compromised of images. This focuses on the architecture to be set up to best suit the need for dealing with this specific type of data. The convolution neural network operation consists of the following. We have the input layer which contains the images, we have the convolution neural network layer and we have the output layer which contains the image class. The flow of the information is as the following. We have the input images, the convolution neural network and the output layer. A convolution neural network could categorize images according to the object including in them. And that is not their only use. For example, a trained convolution neural network could be used to detect the human emotion in a picture. We can provide them with an image of a person and they produce a classification to the effect of what that person seems to be feeling and it will associate it with a probability such as 90% happy or 80% sad in a similar way to what our brain does when we are trying to figure out if a person is happy or sad. We cannot be 100% sure. Of course, this requires more level of training. Since uh, detecting a human emotion from their facial expression is a pretty puzzling task for a human. Now we will discuss how the convolution neural network scan images. Well, it all starts at the fundamental. Let's say we have two images. One black and white image of 2 by 2 pixel and another color image of 2 by 2 pixel as well. The neural network will leverage the fact that this is a two-dimensional array. 
On the other hand, the convolution neural network will just see the visual representation of the image. On computer terms, this is a two-dimensional array where every pixel is having a value between 0 and 255. That is an 8-bit of information. And since this is a black and white image, 0 will be black and 1 will be completely white. And between them is a grayscale with possible option. And based on this information, the computer can work with the image. In a colored image, it's a three-dimensional array. We have the red, blue, and green layer, which is stands for RGB. Each pixel is assigned three values. Each one of these values is between 0 and 255. And we can find what color is this pixel by combining these three values. That means the red layer is represented with a value between 0 and 255, and so are the blue and green layer. They are presented in an RGB format. For example, a maroon color will be presented to the neural network as 12800. Let us say we have a black and white smiley face image. For the sake of simplicity, we will assign zero value for the white pixel and one value for the black pixel, meaning it contains a value. Then we will train the convolution neural network to detect the smiles and will teach it the pattern of zeros and ones typically associated with a smiley shape. So for detecting a smile in a black and white image, the convolution neural network will search for the pixel inside the image with a value of 1. And that is how the convolution neural network will detect the smiley face in an image. In the end, the convolution neural network is different from the other type of artificial neural network in that instead of focusing entirely on the problem domain, knowledge about specific type of input is exploited. This in turn allows for much more simpler network architecture to be set up. That's it guys for this tutorial. If you have any question or feedback, please leave them down below. And don't forget to subscribe in order to learn more about the convolution neural network. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.